Waterbenders are experts taking attacks and sending it right back, using their opponent's momentum and energy against them, which is why they were able to successfully keep the Fire Nation away for so long. Well, I mean, that's why the North was able to at least. Uh, the South, not so much. R.I.P. Katar's mom. But today we're going to learn how to use one of the fundamental moves of Waterbenders. It's actually used in the show quite often. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the weapons that are and should be used by the Water Tribe and Waterbenders. At least in part in my opinion, because well, as you see in the show, not many Waterbenders actually use some sort of external weapon. But let's play a game. Imagine you were born into the Water Tribe. If the last number of your like is a one, four, or seven, you are a waterbending warrior. If it's a two, five, or eight, you're a healer. And if it's a three, six, or nine, you're a non-bender. But, but if it's a zero, you can bend blood. Let me know what you got down in the comments. But for now, let's run that intro. What's up guys, it's the only ninja warrior with aviators and a super hero hat and welcome to the modern ninja. This is episode 3, breaking down the avatar in real life series where we go over the different styles of bending that you see in avatar and breaking down and actually teaching you how to do it in real life. But before we get into the tutorial, let's talk a little bit about the weapons. Now the people of the water tribe have several different types of weapons that they use in their fight against the fire nation from axes, spears, knives, and much more. But the two most famous are the Battle Club and Boomerang, both being go-to weapons for Sokka for most of the show, at least until he made his space sword. But technically that was a Fire Nation thing, so we're, we're not gonna get into that. The War Club is carved from a polar bear femur and a design is painted in blue on either side of the blade. There's also a heavy ball and a notch on one end of the blade that hooks their opponents and allows you to use it as a bludgeoning weapon. And with a leather strap attack for a more secure grip, keeping it from slipping out of the wielder's hands in the cold weather, this weapon was used quite effectively for battle against the Fire Nation or even other tribes throughout the years. But what's wild is that this specific club that Sokka used is actually based on a weapon used by Native American cultures, specifically the same Native American tribes that the Water Tribe people are actually based on. Which is really cool that the writers of the show actually thought about that much of the culture. The boomerang is a small L-shaped weapon made of metal in the show, but can be made of wood and other materials like bone, whatever really they have access to. When thrown correctly, the boomerang travels in a curved path before returning to the point in which you threw it. It is by far the most important and treasured of Sokka's weapons, as he considers it to be essential part. Of, he considers considers it to be an essential part of his arsenal. I feel like I've lost part of my identity. Here's your produce ponytail guy. I used to be boomerang guy. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. It's late. I'm sorry. I suck at YouTube. <laughs> but yet again, this weapon has roots in the native tribes that the waterbenders are actually based on, which again is super cool. I love that. However, you don't really see the waterbenders use very many weapons as far as uh, their combat goes. Yes, they carry packs of water, but you don't really see them carry weapons. Um, so I was thinking about what would make sense for a waterbender to carry, and I immediately came up with the rope dart or chain whip or meteor hammer. There's lots of names for what is essentially a weight at the end of a rope. Specifically moves like the water whip that they use in water bending uh, and in the show all the time directly translates to things that you would do with these rope and chain weapons. Using that flowy movement of your body into your weapon and then sending it out to strike their opponent with force that could not be matched with a single punch. And so even though they don't technically have weapons in the show that assist their bending, I think this would be a perfect alternative for someone trying to learn water bending in real life. I mean, it's basically just gonna mimic how water acts in the show pretty perfectly. But that's enough about talking about the weapons. Let's go to the school, to the mats, and talk about one of the core principles of water bending and how you can practice it right now. 
So water bending is all about pushing and pulling water, using the moon and the ocean to push and pull your opponent, just like a water bender truly would, just like that you see uh, the talk about in the entirety of the Avatar series, both Aang and Korra. And so we're gonna learn a move that allows you to use your opponent's energy against them and get them to the ground where you can either escape, continue forward, or do whatever you need to do to defeat your opponent. Disclaimer, now, any martial arts you can ever learn for self-defense on social media, whether that's YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you have to remember that you are practicing it, if you do practice it, in air without a partner. It can be different once you have resistance. So make sure to grab a partner and work it with resistance because resistance adds in a whole different level. But here's the technique we're learning today. One. Let's break it down step by step so that it's a little bit easier to understand so you can practice it at home. So we're gonna start off, this is Bobby from Lotus Martial Arts. I'll leave all of his links in the description if you wanna check him out. He does amazing martial arts, Kung Fu based and amazing, amazing fights. So you can definitely check it out. So he's gonna start with that straight punch coming towards my head. What we're gonna do is get the habit of blocking with the back of our arms because we don't know if he's carrying a knife, we don't know if he has something sharp in his hands, maybe keys or whatever. So we wanna make sure that nothing important gets cut by accident. So Abby throws the punch, bang. We're blocking with two hands, with our palms facing us and the back of our hands facing our opponent. Once we are here, we're going to scoop underneath the arm at the same time our right hand strikes to the face. I'm not used to trying to use my hand and just aim because you don't want to do that. When adrenaline's pumping, you just want to go. So I'm taking my entire arm to strike to the face. As that happens, I will take my right leg step behind and keep the momentum going. So, one more time, just to catch up to there. We block two hands. Our inside hand scoops underneath as our right hand strikes the face. We step behind with our right leg, keeping the center of our body. We're gonna turn a little bit. Keeping our center of gravity in between our legs. We wanna make sure his center of gravity is behind his legs. That means that when I twist, he falls and I don't. From here, I like holding onto that arm because it can go straight into a knee break or an elbow break. We can drop our knee into their ribs. We can drop the wrist and break the wrist. We can drop with a punch to the face. You can do whatever you need to do to get out of there or whatever self-defense situation you may be you know, needing to deal with, whether that's escaping from the location or dealing with someone else, whatever that looks like. So, one more time out of medium speed, walking you through it, we block, scoop underneath, strike the face, step behind, and rotate through, finish them off once they hit the ground. And again, I just wanted to make sure that we had a good way to defend ourselves that a water bender would approve of. And if you really look in the show, you can see them using some of these motions in their water bending like the way it's shown on the show, which is just super cool, right? He's mute, he's not really, but he's mute today. So anyway, we're gonna get back inside and finish the video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you like this channel and want to show some support, consider becoming a member. Not only will you get most, if not all of the videos early, very, very early in some cases, and just a little bit early in other cases. Um, but with how these series works, I like to record them in batches and release them for the members as early as possible. So not only will you get that, but you'll also be supporting the channel and helping me make better and better content for you guys, as well as getting uh, part of being in the credits uh, and getting you know credit for supporting the show and supporting the channel if that's something that you would like. And if you, you know, don't have the money or don't want to support in that way, that's okay. Just dropping a like, maybe a comment to make my day a little bit better would be just fine. That would be more than appreciated. I really do like reading y'all's comments, especially when you just want to have a conversation about whatever topic we're talking about. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. Be the modern ninja, but left off. Just know I'm dangerous. Perfect.
I'm on that Bruce Lee flow like water, state of mind. Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper, as you know, I got the pen. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. I hit flashing change while your boy been in the gym. Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to.